What's up guys and welcome back to yet another episode of Game on Garage where today, oh yes, the coilovers finally came in so today we will be installing them on our race car MX-5. They are 32 way dampening adjustable and you can set the preload independently of the rider. So you can see we've got two locking collars over here. Now I did go for the suggested spring rates, 12 cages in the front, 8 in the rear. And as you can see, it's for a 89 to 05 or NA or NB MX-5. Now there are a ton of coilover install videos online, especially for the MX-5. So this is not going to be a how-to. This is just the progress of me building my MX-5 race car. Now let's get started. Now before we get these beautiful coilovers inside the car, there's a few things we can check and adjust first. First of all is your preload. Now as you can see on here, as you can see there, this is a 180 mil or 18 centimeter spring. So that means the length of the spring should be 18 centimeters. But when we measure it, it only comes up to 17 and a half centimeters. That means there's five mil of preload. If you would like to adjust your preload, you have to undo the bottom collar and then spin the top collar, um, adjusting your preload accordingly. I'm going to go with the suggested five mil. Next up is your ride height. So I measured that from the top of the mounting strut to the middle of our hole over here, which is right around 41 centimeters. And I just made sure to match it on both coilovers. The last thing that you're going to adjust is, of course, your dampening, but that's also pretty easy to adjust after it has been installed. So with the coilovers set up the way you think you'd like them to be, don't worry, this is not final. We can always adjust them while they're on the car. It's time to get installing. We're going to remove three bolts. The first bolt is the anti-roll bar drop link. Then we're going to remove our top A-arm bolt through here. And of course, our bottom coil over bolt right there. So with those three nuts out and the two top bolts removed, the coil over should come out quite easily. So here's a quick comparison. As you can see, this is obviously way more beautiful. Um, also, it's quite a bit thicker for the dampening. The coils are a bit closer apart and slightly thicker as well. And of course, they are quite a bit shorter, as you can see. Right, let's get the new one in. Uh, as usual, installation is just the reversal of removal. So we slide the bottom of the shock in, we get the bolt in, and then we'll redo all the other bolts, jack it up to make sure the two top mounts go in as well. And with all the bolts redone and the two top nuts back on as well, this corner is all done. The left side is going to be exactly the same, so let's move on to the rear. With the car flipped around, safely in the air on jack stands and the wheel removed, it's time to do the rears. This is similar to the, what we did in front, but it's even easier. For here, it's only the one bolt for the bottom of the shock and then your anti-roll bar drop link over here. No need to mess with any of the A-arms and then of course, in the boot, we'll have to remove this cover for the fuel uh, filler and remove the two top nuts over there. And here we go, all the new side by side. Now, as you can see, these look quite a bit different. First of all, again, the much thicker shock over here. Obviously, it's quite a bit shorter, but the big thing for the rears especially, the, for, especially on these MX-5s, they're quite known for having very little droop and compression on the rear. So see how much more suspension travel we've got over here for the piston inside. So that already is going to be a very nice upgrade. Now let's just set these up and put them back in the car. And as usual, installation is just the reverse of removal. Remember to tighten the two bolts up front, as well as the anti-roll bar, and then obviously the bolt that goes through the bottom of the coilover. And with that, we're all done. Um, there is still some 
possibility of the shock sagging or the springs sagging a little so ride the car for about a, a week or two and then we can adjust our final ride height let's see what it looks like now since i wasn't sure what ride height to go for we are still a little high but as i mentioned we can just ride these in and then we'll see if we need to go lower at least it does seem like the front and rear is pretty much at the same height so that's one good thing the way i did that is to measure the distance between the uh, the stop for the preload, the upper stop, and then also the locking nut or stop for the right height, the bottom one. Make sure those distance are the same all four corners and you should be fine. But that's going to be it for this video, guys. Hit that like button if you liked it and please remember to subscribe. That really, really helps me out. Stay tuned for more race car project. We've got a few more parts coming in soon. But in the meantime, remember, it's not game over. It's game on. Yeah.